All right, guys, it is Saturday night again in time for another long-awaited Saturday night snack and a movie. It is December 2nd, which means it is officially the beginning of the Christmas season. So what better to watch tonight than an awesome Christmas movie? And tonight, that would be How the Grinch Stole Christmas, starring Jim Carrey. I actually have two copies of this movie because I bought this one first. And then I saw this one that's in a green case and I couldn't resist. And now I refuse to get rid of either of them because I love them both. But just like the green case on this, tonight our snack is going to be green. We are making neon green Grinch fudge. So come with me while we shop for the ingredients and then we'll come back here, we'll make the fudge, and we'll have an awesome movie night with Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. <laughs> All right, wait a minute. I noticed this carnation display right inside the door. However, it looks like it's all evaporated milk. That is not what we want. We want condensed milk, and I don't see any condensed milk here. Okay, we need gel food coloring, but we need neon green. So this is neon, and it says it needs to be oil-based instead of water. I don't see anywhere on here where it says whether it's water or oil-based, but it's the only neon green food coloring they have, so we're gonna get it. I don't see any red heart sprinkles anywhere here, but that doesn't necessarily mean they don't have it. They have tons of sprinkles over here in this section, so we might get lucky. Um, or we might not. <laughs> we do need white chocolate chips, so we're gonna get these Giardelli because I know they are absolutely delicious. Pretty sure we have some of this vanilla extract at home, but we're gonna get some just in case. And I think we just have Himalayan pink salt at home, so we're gonna get some regular salt here. Here's our condensed milk right here. We're gonna go ahead and get two of these because I honestly don't remember how much we need. We also need some unsalted butter, so I think we're gonna go with the great value here just because it's cheaper. So it looks like we got everything except the red heart sprinkles and I didn't see any red heart sprinkles over there so they could be anywhere amongst the baking stuff or I don't know there's a couple places they could be so now the mission is strictly to find some kind of candy or something that's shaped like little hearts man what a bummer I thought I found them for a second these are cinnamon bears cherry juju coins cinnamon imperials if we could find something like this that would shape like hearts would be perfect see this is why it's best at each holiday to pick up the unique things you find like at Valentine's Day we would find these things all over the store let's just check this clearance section over here just for the heck of it because you never know yeah I don't see anything Thing over here sometimes they have a lot of different sprinkles and things but not today I thought maybe over here in the craft section among the wedding supplies they would have some kind of heart-shaped candies or sprinkles or something like that but surprisingly they don't what the heck man they have everything else here rainbows mermaid tails gold stars even dinosaurs and little bees which are pretty cool but no hearts. I really didn't want to mess with something like this, but I guess worst case scenario, I could get some fondant. It's edible, it's flavored like vanilla, and we could just shape it like hearts. Guys, this is so frustrating. There's a billion different kinds of sprinkles here, but not one of these has hearts in them. We got snowflakes, stockings, I don't even know what that is candy canes, different colored lights. There's all kinds of different things over here. More sprinkles, more things over here. I thought this was hearts, but it's actually bow ties. Those right there. There's even these little decoration things here. It's little carrots and stones for snowman eyes and noses, which is pretty dang cool, but it's not hearts. You would think that somewhere among all this shaped candy, there would be some hearts, but look at this. They even have sweet tarts Mary mix that has snowmen 
in trees and bells that look like the Taco Bell bell. <laughs> all right, I found the hearts, but I actually had to go somewhere else to get them. I gotta drive all the way to Canton to the Michael's Craft Store to get them. The, the, the. the Grinch! So I'm getting ready to start cooking up here, or at least making this fudge, and I hear a crash downstairs. So let's go downstairs and see what fell. And I'll show you what I deal with all the time. <laughs> what in the world, man? Look at this. We got one poster that has fallen off the wall. And you can see it's just leaning on the back of the couch. And the other one fell off the wall over here. Now, I have all these attached with, like, industrial strength Velcro. But... They fall off the wall all the time. I'm trying to avoid putting a billion holes in these walls, but it's kind of looking like I'm gonna have to. Guys, before we go back upstairs, let me just tell you how much I love this room down here. I mean, even with the stupid posters that keep falling off the walls. I mean, look at this. This is where I film all my fan mail down here. Obviously, it's where I watch all my movies, and it's where I sit down here and watch movies, and then open up tons and tons of Garbage Pail Kids. God, I love Garbage Pail Kids. Look at this one. It's called Archie Tect. It's an alien with blueprints that says Project 51. It's blueprints for the pyramids. <laughs> Anyways, all right, let's get back to what we were doing. Go up here and make some Grinch fudge. So what we're gonna do is use a recipe that I found on a website called Simplistically Living. There's a lot of options on here when you search for Grinch fudge, and this one looked absolutely delicious. It says, easy, six ingredient Grinch fudge recipe and the pictures looked absolutely awesome. I mean, look at that. Does that not look absolutely delicious for an awesome Grinch Who Stole Christmas movie night? Now the hearts that we're going to use are a little bit different than what's on here. I wanted some that would be easier to eat with the fudge. These look like you'd actually have to pry them out before you eat the fudge. So using this recipe, let's get down to making our fudge. So the ingredients we need. Classic white chocolate chips. Now, they don't have to be Ghirardelli. I just think those are delicious. We need pure vanilla extract. We need condensed milk. I like Eagle brand. Unsalted sweet cream butter. Now, I honestly don't know why it needs to be unsalted, but sometimes when you're melting chocolate and mixing things with it, certain things will cause it to harden up. So, that's why I went ahead and followed the directions and got the unsalted butter. Um, then we need gel food coloring. Now, the recipe says it needs to be oil-based. I didn't see anything on this box here at all that says anything about it being water or oil-based, but apparently if it's water-based, that's one of the things that can interfere with that melting chocolate. We also need salt, and the final ingredient is these little heart-shaped candies. Now, these are the ones that I ended up having to go to uh, Michael's Craft Store for. You can see there's tiny little pink ones in there, but the red ones are the ones that we're gonna use. The pink ones are just these tiny, tiny little things here. But what we're gonna use are the red ones, which are about four to five times the size of that. Now, in the movie, the Grinch's heart grows three times. Is it two or three? I don't remember, but anyway. <laughs> so if we really wanted to, we could use the bigger heart and we could use the smaller heart. And I think that might actually be what we do because that's a pretty dang good idea. All right, let's put those away and we'll get to making this fudge. Now, the first thing it wants us to do is put some tin foil inside a 9x9 nine nine baking dish. We don't have a 9x9. Nine nine. I should have thought of that before. All we have is a 9x13. So this is probably going to be some pretty thin fudge. Of course, this isn't getting baked. It's just going either in the fridge or sitting out on the counter. So I'm going to use this to create a smaller area there. And there we go. You see how that works? Now he goes and fetches the duck. Avocado spray. Doesn't have to be avocado. Just some kind of an oil spray so that it doesn't stick. All right, next we're going to prepare our condensed milk. Wow, that's thick. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Wow, that is really thick. Butter and a pinch of salt. Get that mixed up a little bit. The butter has to be softened so that it will actually mix in with this and then melt very quickly and then melt very quickly in the melted chips because it thickens up those chips and you still need to be able to pour it into the pan. Wow, that's like caramel. <laughs> so the one thing I'm gonna change with this is this vanilla extract. I'm not gonna use it. The recipe basically says if you wanted to give it a little bit more of a vanilla taste to use some kind of a vanilla extract. But this stuff is kind of like a brown in color and it says that it will change the color of the fudge. And I want this stuff to be bright green. So I'm not even gonna mess with the vanilla extract. What you could use if you wanted that vanilla flavoring is something like this. This is actually coconut flavoring, but you can see how it's perfectly clear. So that would not interfere with the coloring that we're gonna add in here. But I certainly do not want it to taste like coconut. Now we also wanna make sure that we have our gel food coloring prepared. How the heck do you get this open? That's exactly why you wanna have it prepared. <laughs> because you have to mix it to the, uh, the melted chips in this mixture before it hardens. So basically you have to have everything prepared. Oh my gosh, I can't even get this open. You have to have everything prepared for when those chips come out of the microwave melted so that you can pour this stuff in there, add the food coloring, and mix it up and pour it into your pan before that chocolate hardens. There we go, neon green. Make sure we don't need to cut off the tip or anything. So that is ready to roll. Now just to be a little bit better prepared even, I'm gonna use a fork and whip this up a little bit more just to get that butter chopped up a little bit more in there because we don't want chunks of butter in our fudge. Now the next step is to take our white chips, put them in a microwave safe bowl and melt them in the microwave. So we're gonna use the whole bag, just pour them right in there. And the way that you do this is that you microwave this in 30 second increments. And in between each, as it comes out, you mix it up, stick it back in for another 30 seconds until it's all melted. Yeah, the first time it's barely melted, there's still chips there. You just mix them up a little bit to even out the, uh, the chips. Stick them right back in, another 30 seconds, and you do that over and over until they're melted and ready to mix the other stuff in. And we're gonna get our dish ready here to pour it in once it's done and mixed with the other stuff. This could be the last time here, and that's only three times at 30 seconds. It is getting kind of hot, so yeah, there you go. You see how that's completely melted there? Now we're gonna mix this stuff with it, and you gotta work fast here because this will thicken up that chocolate. Mix that up good. Yeah, it's getting thicker real quick. See how thick that gets? Now it does say you can stick that back in the microwave for another 30 seconds if you need to. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. About 15 seconds is good enough. There we go. Add in our green. It says seven to eight drops, but I just gave it a big long squeeze because gel does not drop. There we go, we can see it turning green. How cool is that? Go back to our spatula here. And now we're just gonna pour it in here. Shake that up a little bit. There's your fudge. Now we gotta let that dry. But the last thing we need to do before we let it harden up is to put our hearts on. And we wanna use the big hearts. So just gonna pour some of these out here so we can get them easily. And once again, you can see how much bigger the red ones are than the pink ones. And we're just gonna take each heart and place it right on top of the fudge, right where it would be about in the corner for each piece of fudge. And there we go. Now, if you wanna do what we were talking about earlier with adding the little tiny pink hearts on top of the red hearts, then you can use some writing icing. We're gonna use red, and basically we can just put a tiny little dot. And unfortunately, this is so 
dried up in here that I can't even get any out. But if you had some that was good, you could put a little dot on each heart and stick it right on top of those. All right, wait a minute, I got the yellow to work. So we're just gonna squeeze a tiny, tiny bit onto the heart and then take the little pink heart and put it right on there. Okay. And apparently it's only gonna work for two. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, let's try it this way. I got a little bit of the extra fudge on my finger. We'll just take the little heart, tap it right on the edge, just to get a little on there, and then tap it on. Okay, I mean, that works. These little things are really difficult to work with. You basically need tweezers. Anyways, that's how it looks right there, guys. We got all the little hearts in place. And we got four of the tiny hearts in place. Man, those things were difficult. Hopefully you guys will have an easier time with these little things. I don't know, I think it looks cool, but I think I like it better with just the red hearts. So anyway, there's our fudge to this point. Now all we have to do is either put it in the fridge for like three hours, or you can leave it set out for six to eight hours. Probably not even that long, it just says overnight. It's actually noon right now, so I'd be okay to leave this sitting out on the counter and it would be ready for movie night. But for the purposes of finishing this video and getting it up for you guys to watch by this evening, I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in the fridge for a couple hours. Come on, hurry up, Club Homer. <laughs> All right, so it's been about three hours. Let's check on our fudge here. Oh, yeah. That is looking so good. Let's get that thing out of there. Let's go ahead and pull it out of there. And that way we can just use a pizza cutter. Okay, that turned out awesome, guys. Here's a piece that has both hearts on it, and here's a piece with just the red heart. Personally, I like that one the best, and all that's left is the taste test. Mmm, oh my gosh, that is so good. Grinch fudge for the win. And it wouldn't be awesome movie night if we didn't order pizza, and JoJo's. Oh, yeah. If you've never had JoJo's, so delicious. All right, guys. I'm going to go get my pajamas on, pop in the Grinch, snuggle up with my wife, and have some pizza, some JoJo's, and some green Grinch fudge.